Howdy everybody, Hellcrex here, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Thoughts from a Dystopian World, Episode 1. Yes, Dystopian World, for Dystopian Wars. Yes, it's a game that's been around for a while, and individuals have decided to eh, get, eh, maybe look at it again, play it again, and they just need ideas and thoughts about how to uh, look at the different units and stuff like that well in this inaugural episode we're going to start off with the federated uh, states of america with the dreadnought which is the uh well it's kind of like the tank of the fsa it's when it takes a lot of firepower to take it down it has a lot of ability to protect itself so we're gonna delve right into it and try to do a little bit of discussion and see how it works now uh dystopia wars you know if you don't know anything about it and you're kind of interested in about it it's a game that takes place in the 1800s uh the world has had you know aliens and stuff like that show up and you know science has advanced more quickly than it did in our timeline so in this timeline you got fusion reactors in the 1800s you got shield technology and you got aliens you name it there's all kinds of cool stuff roaming around out there and with the first episode we're going to talk about the federated sons dreadnought the enterprise Yes, the Enterprise. Uh, the Enterprise is a ship, uh, Dreadnought class. It comes in at 280 points. You know, not a bad little ship. Uh, it has uh, a preful of decent weaponry. It has three turrets on board. It has a broadside and a rocket battery and uh, some internal generators. Yes, you said generators, which can be a shield generator, target painter, kinetic generator, a nullification generator. Now, when we look at the Enterprise, you know, if you see the, the data sheet here that's going to be popping up, it has a DR, which you look around there, you see a DR, which is 8. That's the damage rating. And that's how much damage you have to do in a single barrage to even do one point of damage. Then you have the CR, which is 13, which is really high in this game. That's about, I think, the best you can get. It has a CR uh, critical rating of 13. So you've got to do 13 points of damage just to get a crit in the game. And crits are what really start hampering uh, ships. You know, you could cause damage to systems on board, the movement, etc. Speaking of movement, this ship has a six movement, has ten hull points, which are the HP, assault points ten, which is the AP. It has an AA factor, which is a anti-aircraft factor of eight. So if you got any type of small flyers come flying in that would do a torpedo run on it or dive bomb action on it it has eight anti-aircraft guns without any damage done to the ship yet it has uh, cc which is your countermeasures for taking out torpedoes only five and then you have your rating which is like your ram rating the ir uh, so if you have a collision between two ships you roll eight dice to see if you do damage to the enemy ship or friendly ship for that matter now let's just look at uh some of the options we have right here now the enterprise has can choose up to two uh internal generators without duplication so you get one of the following four and then you get to choose the second one but they cost you points now the first one i always choose no matter what which is going to bring the the point cost up to 310 i always take a shield generator because a shield generator if someone does damage to let's say they roll 12 dice at you and do eight points of damage all right so you're going to take one point of damage to the hull 
But before you do the damage to the ship, you get to roll three dice because of your shield generator. So if it's direct gunnery and you roll those three dice, if any of them is a four, five, or six, you're going to start negating damage done to your ship. So let's say it is eight and you roll a four and a six, that's three you can knock off. That drops it to five. So it basically, the shields suck up some damage and your hull armor bounces the rest off so you don't take any damage which is one of the reasons why i you know a ship like this the pig is able to be your tank it goes out there and, and soaks up a lot of damage if people decide to shoot at it. it's going to take some major guns to do damage to a ship like this so that's one thing i always do as i'm going to choose to take a shield generator which knocks your points up to 310 well that stands the reason you're always going to want to do that now you have some choices here you got a target painter for 20 points out to 12 which is your primary gun range which we're going to be talking about here in a second and then uh primary guns which is going to be your p weapons which is your main turrets or you can take a kinetic generator for 15 or nullification generator for five now if you decide to go with the target painter out to range 12 you get a plus one to hit which is kind of handy in a way so for 20 points you can make this ship cost you 330 points and if you get or in this game you have range bands you get four range bands you look up there you where it says on the, the chart if you go back you see rb then a one two three and four uh that's the range bands that those weapons and that's how many dice that you get to roll six-sided dice in that range band with that gun so if you have a main turret and range band two that's out to 16 so if you have an enemy ship and you say i'm going to target that ship you get to roll a die and you roll the target painter on it and let me see your offensive that which is an offensive weapon and a target painter on a four five or six you target paint the target and you get a plus one so any roll of a four or a five you get to do one that's one hit so with a target painter if they're in range range band Two, which is 9 to 12 distance of the uh, you get a plus 1 so if you look at the main turret each turret has 10 dice so if you're firing them separately each turret separately you roll 10 dice and you get a plus 1 so on a 3 or better you're going to do 1 point of damage a 4 you do 1 point a 5 you do 1 point and then if you roll a 6 natural 6 you do two points of damage and all sixes get to re-roll again to have a potential of doing even more damage. So that is kind of a nice thing up close. If you get this ship in close and you want to start banging away at targets, you're going to do potentially doing more damage. Now, the problem is with P turrets is that when you get into range band one, you get a minus one to hit. So you need fives and sixes to do damage, but if you have a target painter and you target the target, then you're going to do damage on a four, five, or six instead of the five or six. So that makes, it's kind of a handy little system. Now, the kinetic generator is 15 points. Uh, if points are going to be a problem, sometimes I take a kinetic generator. And what it does is, uh, if you look up there, the ship has a minimum move. Uh, a kinetic generator gives you the ability to roll one die so you roll a d6 and then you know, say you roll a four uh, this ship will move a minimum straight forward four inches and you add this to your your movement modifier so the ship normally can move up to six and if you roll a four it has now a 10 inch move but four of that has to be directly forward because whatever that kinetic generator gives you that d6 that you roll that automatically means that you have to move forward that distance before you can make it any turns all right so 
hopefully that's clear as mud and if you want to get a ship uh, across the board a little faster a kinetic generator helps out and that's the thing about the federated uh, states the north shall rise again and the uh, most of the ships have the ability to have kinetic generators on board it's one of the things that they believe in so uh this can end up being a sh fleet that moves a little faster with their capital ships um or massive ships now, this is a massive uh, capital ship you know and your cruisers and stuff like that are capital ships but you know that's one of the, the nice things about it. you can speed this thing up get it across the table a little bit faster get it into range be able to hit uh, targets now uh the one other thing we want to talk about is that with the three main turrets you can combine those together link them together so let's say you have a target that you have a kinetic generator on board you roll a d6 and you roll a five you add your to that your movement modifier of six so now you can move forward 11 and possibly get uh into let's say you're outside the range band four before and you move up forward enough that suddenly you might find yourself in range band three maybe or four let's say the target's in range band four it wasn't in before you moved up because of the kinetic generator uh you got three turrets and if you look at the range band four you get six dice all right, so I'm going to fire them all at the same target because at that range I have, I just want to make sure I do some damage. Say so you got a cruiser out there that is at range band four and I want to do some damage to it. So you take six dice, put it off to the side, add the two other turrets, which is six and six is 12. Half of that is six and add that to the original pool. So now you have 12 dice that you could throw at a cruiser. And let me tell you, a cruiser getting hit with 12 dice, the odds are it's going to take some major damage. Now, this brings up to the other wonderful thing about this. It has the MAR technique, uh, model assigned rules, and you see sustained fire under the MAR rule. Main turrets, three. Uh, that is because... Uh, if you linked all those weapons together, you get to re-roll three of those dice that miss. Let's say you roll a, some ones and twos and stuff in there. Take three of those, re-roll them again. You may end up with three sixes. I've done that before in a game. And then just totally obliterate a cruiser at range band four off the map with a dreadnought or a heavy uh, gunfire. So that is a nice thing uh with sustained fire what you get with uh the federated uh, states they have a lot ability to have re-rolling dice now uh we look at the other thing here we got the nullification generator which is five points so you, it could put you up to 315 if you want to go with the nullification generator uh the nullification generator I rarely use those things is personally I rather run with a shield generator or target painter or kinetic generator nullification generator though is a defensive weapon system basically and you can get close enough to uh, shut down an offensive generator all right so you roll a d6 on a one or two nothing happens a three or four or five enemy generator effect is ignored and then on a six you ignore that generator and you can put it offline on a six now offensive generators which are the following uh, you got a disruption generator, you got a fury generator, pulse generator, target painter. So if you have somebody you're facing off that has a target painter on board and you move forward, you can have the possibility of shutting it down so they can't use it all right, until their next turn. Then there's a sonic generator, Tesla generator, and let's see what else. Calcification generator. Those are the ones that uh, are offensive which a nullification generator works with and typically though uh, 
a nullification generator is pretty short range and you have to be uh, fairly close to use it now okay uh, what else do we have on board this thing we have a port and starboard broadside which is a 975 and oh, I just want to go back to let's say that cruiser we were talking about was in range band 3 because you, you had a kinetic generator and you moved up really fast and got into range band 3 uh, your guns are 8 so you can put 8 off the side you add 8 and 8 together 16 half that so you could be rolling 16 dice on a cruiser or even an enemy flyer or something that's out there a little bit range and scrape it off the face of the earth uh, pretty quickly with 16 dice uh, I guarantee you with 16 dice you're going to be doing some good damage you're going to have some sixes in there there have been times with 16 dice I have done 30 or 40 points of damage uh, and got like three critical rolls on somebody and a cruiser just obliterates and then one of those crit rolls happens to be a uh, ammo you know you hit the uh, uh, let's see what is it you get the critical roll of uh, magazine exploding that's it and then all models within a certain range I think it's four ex when that ship explodes and you can take out and do a bunch of damage just you blow one ship up and the other ones around it take damage because of the catastrophic explosion is it shrapnel flying everywhere and you just leave a big crater in the water and a big old hole where it explodes i've done that before with a ship like this so it is a interesting little uh a ship that can do some major damage and you look at if you get this ship in without any damage to it into range band two oh boy now you're talking 20 dice and then you get sustained fire of three with those turrets and if they're within range of that target if you have a target uh painter possibly and you add them once yeah you can do a lot of damage to your ship and just uh, take them out really quickly just they're done now port and uh, starboard uh broadsides okay those are your rotary auto cannons basically they're small ones that laying down like consider them like your three and five six inch guns they're secondaries that are firing away at targets it's not a lot if you're in range band three let's say that same cruiser you hit it uh, did a bunch of damage to it and it still has one hull point left because maybe it's a heavy cruiser or something and you you have a broadside of five and you could roll five dice and maybe roll some sixes in there and do enough one point of damage to take it out so that's a possibility now uh it does carry which is really nice we have two rocket batteries which are tertiary weapon systems which have a 360 degree arc so they can fire any direction and you get two rocket batteries on board this thing which can can be combined together so you could be doing uh th rolling 13 dice 14 dice 14 dice and combine them together or you can just roll nine on this target nine on that target so if you got a couple cruisers out there at range band three so you got a squadron of three cruisers you could roll uh, technically you could do this is i want to put one turret on each one of the cruisers a rocket battery and one of the on two of the cruisers and a broadside on the third cruiser and just see what happens you could and i've done this before in the game taken out on complete squadron three uh cruisers with one dread dot just taking them out with lucky rolls and with the sustained fire you know that will help you out too because each turret so there you go lots of good stuff now uh the wonderful thing about those turrets is that they have a 270 degree firing arc so you got two of them four so it's really simple if you want to look at what 270 is take like a card 
a 90 degree corner like on a square lay that on a turret and that will tell you the arc of that weapon system and if you angle your ship enough where you can get the broadsides in also you're going to have everything all the main guns will be able to fire off and your rockets obviously have a 360 degree angle so you definitely want to angle this ship to be able to give you the ability to fire off in the different directions uh, which makes it a pretty decent uh, platform for scraping out lots of targets and that pretty much sums up the uh, the dreadnought now with the dreadnought it being a capital ship major capital ship it does have the capability of adding in uh, some escorts you can throw in some escorts which are your um, Springfields which are only 20 points a piece so with for another 60 points you can throw on two Springfields and the wonderful thing about the Springfields you know they have a 5 DR and a 5 or 4 DR and a 5 CR so they can take some damage for a small ship you know they only have two hull points so they don't have to worry about exploding by any chance uh, so that's a nice thing uh, let's see what else they have on the Springfields their mar is attachment to uh, large or massive naval ships three so you can carry up to three of them they're elusive target they have sharp shooters and small target elusive target uh, gives them a minus one to be shot at from ships all right uh, which is your normal ships and then a small target is a minus one against any type of capital ship which is kind of uh, nice in a way because you were able to they can protect themselves being harder to shoot at and uh, but they don't have any offensive weapons and the whole purpose of these escorts is they give you an AA and a CC you have your anti aircraft value of two for each one of them and a CC which is your countermeasures against torpedoes and stuff against targets and the wonderful thing about escorts they combine they don't link fire they combine fire all right so when I was talking about those turrets earlier they were linking together so what I was talking about one main gun and then you link the other two guns together you take add them all up and then you divide that in half that gives you your linked fire combined fire is two and so you got three of these escorts on board they have a anti-aircraft value of two each so if you add them together that's six and you have an anti-aircraft value on a dreadnought is eight you add that six so they roll 14 dice so if you got uh, small flyers coming in to do a torpedo run on them they odds are are going to get shot down while they're doing their torpedo run so you get defensive fire and the same thing goes with uh, torpedoes coming in at you and uh, with the uh, five plus the 11 so you get 11 dice to knock down a, a torpedo spread and let me tell you when you're facing off against like the uh, blazing sun empire or the italians or the um uh, brits uh, from brettonia they have torpedoes it you you're gonna need it you know you're gonna need some uh, countermeasures because they're always gonna be sending torpedoes uh, at you in droves so definitely need some escorts and some and the brits they have a lot of aircraft tiny flyers that will come in so you definitely want the anti-aircraft capability that you're going to add to this uh, mix so that's the wonderful thing about those now one other thing yeah, i did talk about is sharpshooters uh if a ship gets in with range band one you roll a die and i think it was in a six with uh, the sharpshooter you have the you can take out one assault point on a uh, uh, out of the crew and once they all the assault, assault points are gone 
if it's down to zero and you have assault points, then you can they, you get jump infantry basically with jetpacks will fly over from your ship and assault the enemy ship and uh, take them down, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see, sharpshooters. Oh, they have to be within four. Enemy four. And roll eight on a five or six. The target loses one assault point. All right, so that is the nice thing about it. So if you get close enough with three of these, you can have the chance of knocking down some of the assault points and then have the uh, dreadnought do an assault across. So you got an enemy dreadnought. You're facing off, you know, point blank range. These guys would take out some of the assault points and you do your own assault on them just to try to take them down. So that's uh, some options you got right there. And uh, during the critical phase, like I say, you hit targets with the uh, main gunfire. You can knock down, kill off uh, some assault points. So that was it, uh, hard pounding at a seven. You lose D three assault points. Fire if you got a raging fire on board, uh, that will destroy one assault point. And uh, for each one, let's see if there's any more. I don't believe there is. So. Uh, if you definitely if you see a ship that doesn't have any assault points left uh, and which is something that the uh, um, Prussians have Tesla weapons which kills crews off and a lot of times if you get into these games where you knock down almost all the crews due to fire or Tesla weapons then you can go over and take over the ship and just with assault points. So you fire your gunnery someplace and then do an assault. So there are some options with within the game. Now, I think that pretty much sums up the uh, Enterprise as best we can. Uh, it's kind of a long little thing talking about the big uh, pig. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh ships in the game i have two of them so I, there's been games where i've ran two of them and let me tell you, you get two of these guys acting almost like a squadron things start disappearing pretty quickly all right so this is the first episode of thoughts from a dystopian world and some kind of eh, a little bit of tactical aspects of the game and some thoughts uh, going into how to best use one of these uh, weapons in the game. All right, this is for version 2, 2.2, or 2.5, all right, of the game. All right, hope you guys like this. Like and subscribe and share with all your friends. Elcrax out.